Hey guys, this is a market update. There is far more demand from the market now than there is supply, and so the price has to move. We've just broken through this 50K here. Like I've said previously, uh, when we broke through this 50K, for me, that's just going to new all-time highs at that point. We are around 30% away from an all-time high in Bitcoin. 33%. That's it. And we reach the highest price Bitcoin has ever been in its history. Very, very close. We've broken through 50K. So for me, the bull market obviously is on. I said that once we broke 30K, that was the bull market. And once we broke 50K, that's just price discovery into all-time highs. And it's happened a lot faster than I thought. But we can see the data that's showing demand is just massively outstripping supply. There is not enough supply at these price levels. And the only way that you get supply is by bidding the price up. Simple supply and demand. The halving is coming where we have a reduction in the supply of new coins. Now that's you know, further fuel to the fire. It's a typical Bitcoin bull market going on right now where you just have more demand than supply. Bitcoin does not consolidate during these moves, right? You get these big drawdowns, 20, 30%. Focusing on that is completely irrelevant because the next 12 to 18 months is this huge bull market that's happening. Each of the previous bull markets that we've had, Bitcoin does not consolidate. Bitcoin just moves in a straight line. You can see here, it just goes up to the top end, just goes up to the top end. Why would it consolidate here? Why would it kind of move around in a slow fashion? It never has done before. Why would it start now? The reason why we're pumping is not speculation. There just simply is more buyers in the market. So we'll look at that now. If you do trade, uh, check out Bybit, $30,000 deposit bonus down in the description. Um, you can check the details via the link down there. But the demand is huge. They have to bid the price up because there's no supply. Long-term holders aren't selling here. If you've been in Bitcoin, you know that this price is nowhere near where you take profits. These are Bitcoin ETF inflows, um, fresh highs for inflows. So this down here at the bottom is GBTC, the outflows of GBTC, which were obviously very high at the time. These are drying up, right? So it seems like whoever was selling out of GBTC either to take their trade, you know, take profits in their trade from what they did or whatever, or get into the other ones. GBTC um, is having outflows, but those are drying up. The inflows from the other ETFs are very high, as you can see. So uh, this is a very typical dem uh, demand and supply story where demand is just far greater than supply. The only thing that they can do is bid up the price. What you can see here it also is where you know coins are traded and it says here this is from glassnode majority of economic activity has a cost basis of, cost basis of around 15 to 45 that's where we were all trading this move right so if you've been in you know in in the market you've watched all these previous um, market updates as soon as blackrock applied for the etfs this was the trade at 15 17 18 20 25 that was the trade of Halving's coming, ETF's coming, supply and demand is going to imbalance to the demand side. You know, a lot of people were trading this, as you can see. But at the previous all-time highs, there's basically nothing, nothing traded here. You see this? Volume very low. And so this 50K is basically entering into price discovery for BTC. There's nothing here. No one's traded here. If people are looking to get out or something, why would anyone be getting out? We're in the huge uptrend in, in Bitcoin, right? So what we're entering is a typical bull market for BTC where demand outstrips supply and you enter into this price discovery mode. It's going to get really volatile around here. You know that Bitcoin has these big drawdowns, right? You can see these in, in the bull markets. But what happens in these, in these uh, times is this, a huge move. So... We're in the meat of this move at the moment. It doesn't seem like it's slowing down. It doesn't seem like we would get some consolidation unless something happens in, in the world, which obviously we can't uh, predict. But it's happening. The trade that we went into, the ETF trade, it's happening and we're, we're breaking out of this 50K level. So it looks good for BTC because the ETF inflows seem to be speeding up, not slowing down. These will come out at a level, but you've seen Fidelity as well. 
starting to introduce Bitcoin into other ETFs, like broad market indexes, where you have, you know, broad kind of indexes that, you know, uh, track maybe world growth or something. And they're starting to implement Bitcoin in those as well, because a lot of those indexes have gold and they're putting Bitcoin into there. So it's not just specific Bitcoin exposure ETFs, it's Bitcoin coming into lots of other kind of broad indexes, which is exactly what Bitcoin is supposed to be. And so it's a great story. You know, it's a great narrative to trade. And so we're in the middle of it right here. Uh, yes, we'll get some drawdowns. But you can see the positive price action is just slowly breaking through every piece of resistance. And we're 30% away from all-time highs on the dollar price, closer to that in pounds, euros, and we're already at all-time highs against the yen and all the other weaker currencies. We broke all-time highs a long time ago. So the direction of travel is pretty clear. And above this 50K level, there is not a lot of supply. And so the buyers are going to have to really bid up the price to higher levels. Where do they have to bid it to? Well, within the Bitcoin cycle, you're looking at the top end of the range, right? So we've just broken through the trend rate of growth. And you're looking you know, a topping out level around up here if we were to, you know, uh, go to levels of previous cycles, right? So the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin phases, long term secular growth, but you have these drawdowns, it moves up, drawdowns moves up. So if we come up to, you know, what you would consider as a decent trend rate, then you're coming up to this top level, which is 100, 120. We don't know where it's going to get to, we don't know what's going to happen there. But you know, these guys, if they want more Bitcoin, they're going to have to bid the price up because long term holders are not selling. Um, and that means you have to bid the price up to get them to actually move their coins and sell them to you. On chain data proves this out as well. So if you are looking at BTC right now, I mean, it's been a huge move, right? You know, the past, what, six, eight months, it's literally 15 to 50. It's insane. But on chain isn't showing that we are like really overdone in the price. I'm talking about longer term. on is really looking at six months plus. Now, obviously, day to day and short term, yeah, you can get these you know, moves, right? At some point, you just get too much. It's too frothy, the market, and you get kind of a 15% drawdown pretty quick. But for Bitcoin, you have to expect that volatility in crypto. But if you're looking at on-chain and like a six to 12 month view, MVRV is still only at two. Top of a bull market, you would expect it to be six to eight, and we're at two. We're at the trend rate, right? And we're still at trend rate at 52. We're not even like overdone in any, any respect. So two for Bitcoin here, percent of supply and loss held by long-term holders. So during obviously bear markets, long-term holders are sitting on big losses from what they've been dollar cost averaging up. But the top of a bull market is when that goes down to zero. So that's real price discovery where, you know, from a technical basis, not a single person is making a loss in Bitcoin. If you're at an all time high and then the next day you go up again and again, every single person is in a profit. Well, that's when you're down here. That is real price discovery. That is actually the topping out process of those bull markets that can take six to eight months, maybe six months. So you can see that here that when we drop down for this, that's actually the price going up and everyone in profit. It happens here. That's like, you know, topping out of bull market, bear market, real bull market here where you topped out. It's pretty shallow. It was a very short amount of time in the last cycle. We're up here. So if you're thinking about selling or anything, I mean, you're nowhere near the top, right? That has to come right down to the bottom again. When it's there, then we can have a discussion to ourselves about this is really the top of a bull market, right? All the on-chain stuff, like if MVRV is at six or seven, this is basically uh, been zero for like three or four months. That is all the on-chain is telling you, like we're in a topping process. And so, you know, you can't really look at price. You, you No one knows what the price is going to be. You have to look at on-chain metrics showing that this is typically the massive inflection to the upside and also time looking at, look, when things are really this bullish, that's typically, at, uh, you know, towards the top of a cycle. We're not there yet. We're not even halfway. So it's still a, a long way to go from on-chain metrics. This shows us as well. So again, it's a similar thing. When the orange line is up here at the top, that's short-term holders in profit. And obviously during a, an expansion phase and a price discovery phase with volatility, that's just always topping out around these levels. 
And during a bull market, you top out at these levels and then come down to the midline. Top out, midline. So these are expansions and then, and then you know, the contraction, but within this uptrend, right? So coming up to that line. Uh, we had this throughout the last uh, bull market and expansion to new all-time highs as well. Expansion coming down to the midline. What we can see here is that we're in a bull market. Just above my head, we're topping out. We're coming down to the midline. Found support going up again. So all the on-chain data is showing us that we are in a bull market price discovery expansion in the price. Uh, everything is pointing towards that. You can see the ETF flows. You can see the narrative. Everything is showing us that we're in a bull market right now for BTC. One of the worrying things maybe is that we seem to be doing this pretty early. Usually it's after the halving that this happens. But because of the ETFs and just this flow that we've not seen before, the inflow of, of funds from TradFi, and we've never really seen that before, it's happening, it seems to be happening earlier. And the possibility is that it happens earlier, you top out earlier, that could happen. It doesn't matter because you can just look at the on-chain to tell you when things are very, very toppy. So it doesn't matter. You can just look at on-chain. If you want to keep up to date with that, uh, my crypto course, I'll link it down below. Regular updates, private Discord groups where I, you know, I show you all this stuff. So if you want to keep up to date, check that link. That could happen, but the on-chain will tell you. So it really doesn't matter. In any case, you know, rates are high. If a recession happens, that actually is irrelevant for Bitcoin as well, because fundamentally, currencies are getting destroyed, absolutely destroyed. In the US, they're spending so much money on the fiscal side of things. The debt is growing ever larger. They're spending so much. This is the debasement of currency, and it is pushing asset prices up. But the assets that have growth over and above the rate of this currency debasement outperform, and everything else can only just keep up. This shows that the Magnificent Seven, there's nothing special about them, apart from the fact that these companies are the really the only ones that can grow their revenue and profit over and above the rate of currency debasement that's happening. Even with all of this, the rest of the market isn't going anywhere. And this shows us that even though GDP in the States is like headlining at like 4%, and everyone says, well, the economy is strong. The economy is not strong. The Fed is completely destroying the private sector through interest rate hikes. That's happening. But luckily, you have these tech firms that are bringing up all the indexes that are actually growing revenue. You have currency debasement from the, the fiscal side, higher debts, higher debt spending, right, which is debasing the currency, because people are looking forward to saying, if you want to pay off your debt, you're going to have to issue even more debt, more debt and more debt. And eventually, you're going to have to drop interest rates, because if you don't, it's actually going to increase the debt burden even more. These companies are the only ones that can grow their revenues and profits at a faster rate than that. These can't, which is why they're kind of not going anywhere. But you can see they've actually come up from the bottom, right? So these guys are slowly tracking this currency debasement. These guys can actually grow things faster than that. It's the same thing, right? Consumer discretionary, you know, financials, staples, materials, they can only just keep up and their head above water of currency debasement. Tech is the thing that actually has growth over and above that. Crypto is a part of that. This is government spending. So when you're seeing GDP at like 4%, it's a, it's a fake metric. Because what you're actually seeing is the economy really, really struggling with high interest rates. And value isn't being produced. Value is only produced in the private sector. Government cannot produce value. What they're doing is pushing up all of these metrics like GDP and inflation through huge government spending because they are issuing so much debt and they have so much debt to pay off that if interest rates are high, they have to issue even more debt and spend even more money, which pushes GDP up further and inflation up further. And it is a debt spiral and inflation spiral. And you can talk to countries that have weak currencies to understand how that goes, right? And so the big problem here is you have to escape this, which is why Bitcoin is going up. So this spending 
is going to continue. This is the net interest payments, all time highs. This is really an issue and people are trying to escape the currency, right? Because it's gonna to have to be devalued at some point if this keeps on. And so if the currency is devalued, where do you wanna be? You wanna be in tech products that can uh, in, increase their revenues and profits over and above that, or you wanna be in hard assets. That's the trade that's playing out. This isn't a short-term trade. This isn't like buy and sell over six months. This is potentially the new paradigm that we're in. And it could really be a trade for the next decade, two decades, right? We just have this devaluation of currencies potentially going into hard assets. BTC is obviously the trade for this. Most parts of the economy, utilities, staples, things like that, there's no hope that they can invent something that can increase output per unit. They can't. They cannot increase output per unit. They just exist. And, and their prices are going to go up with inflation, kind of. The only hope that we have is technology that can increase productivity per unit of energy and actually increase value output and potentially try and reduce some of this debt burden. It's the only thing that we have hope within. The currency is basically a lost cause. And so that's why Bitcoin is going to, in my opinion, continually go up in value versus it. We value Bitcoin in dollars. And so, you know, it's looking like a recovery. But if you go and value Bitcoin in your fiat currency, if you don't live in the States, it's already at all time highs or near or way above that if you have a weak currency. It just shows you what's happening here. So I don't see Bitcoin as a trade or as something to speculate on to make money. I think it's the only safe thing to have. Keep, keep the value of your output in if you have any savings. That's my opinion. And you can see the 15 year trend here is that it just makes new all time highs with obviously volatility. If you do trade, buy a bit deposit bonus 30K. Check out the crypto investor cause thing. It's, it's helping a lot of people. Uh, I'll link that below as well. I'm James, it's my DG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.